great relationships don't just happen. If you want one, you've got to make it yourself. But how do you do that when you didn't have the models and examples that you needed? Some of us were lucky enough to have seen one or two solid marriages growing up. But that's not really enough since what worked for them isn't necessarily going to work for you. And lots of us just started doing marriage and love and relationships the way we thought was expected, only to find ourselves in a love story that's, I don't know, okay, I guess? There's no right one right way to do love. That's good news. You can let go of all that old baggage and craft a marriage or partnership or chosen family or polycule or whatever that is so much more than okay. It's really the creation of a life that finally feels like home. At least that's what doing this has felt like for me. Me too. And getting here wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for us. We learned the hard way, the very hard way, that love is a verb. And the actions of love don't just come naturally. We all need skills and tools and support to do this well. And that's completely normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, research psychologist and ASECT certified sexuality educator. I'll be sharing personal stories, evidence-based research, and case studies from my work as a relationship coach. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Um, I'm a human doing my best to make relationships my biggest priority in life. We're going to dig deep and offer vulnerable conversations between us as we keep learning how to customize our love and keep growing as individuals. As individuals. As individuals. And as a couple. And as a moresome. It's all very interesting. And we're also going to have some amazing, nuanced conversations with experts who can help you learn more ways to design the life you want. And if you find yourself saying at any point, damn, I really needed to hear that while you're listening, I would love it, we would love it, if you would head over and give us a quick rate and review on iTunes. It really does help other people find us, and we'd be so grateful for that. Now, it's time to reimagine your relationship from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hello. We're back. <laughs> We're back. First first full episode not in our bed. Oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> so if this happens to be your first time listening to us, we have typically recorded these episodes live from our bed. No, not live. But, oh, we could do that. We, oh. Okay. okay. Anyway. <laughs> Usually, we are in our bedroom, Great nestled music. up. Comfy. In our bed, but our house is currently not really a house. Our bedroom isn't there anymore. It's something else now. It doesn't really exist. Yeah. It's like two bathrooms or something. It's all very confusing. And instead, we are living in a tent for the summer. We're not recording in a tent right now. Because that would not acoustically be sound. But it's actually really exciting. I'm not a huge camping person. I did go camping when I was a kid. You have been a huge camping I person. Have camped a like a giant not as person a, camping. No. You <laughs> have been thing. a person who loves camping. Yep. But when we found out, surprise, not only do you have to move out of the second floor of your house in order to remediate the mold and, and renovate the things and do what we needed to, but we needed to move out of the whole house. Which is a huge privilege. We're so lucky that oh we get my, to take this project are. on. And uh, we have three dogs and currently five children who live with us full time of the seven kids. So it was a bit of a process. <laughs> yeah, that's a word for it. And we now have the most adorable little village of tents set up outside of um, the house, the little cottage I inherited from my father. In whose laundry room we are currently recording. So we are now coming to you from a laundry room, but that's okay. I'm feeling... Yeah. I am feeling good about the fact that these conversations really can happen anywhere. Yep. Everything can be talk aboutable anywhere. That is a, a truth not everyone has loved about me. Why is everything <laughs> talk aboutable everywhere? Wait, why are we talking about it now? And here. Yeah, like, it's... oh, my minister when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Not a huge fan. Not, not a huge fan of me thinking everything was um, up for talking about. It's been really effective for our relationship, though. It has. And so today we're going to talk about... <gasps> Something new! The year of opening. Ah, uh, you said it. Yes. Okay, big news on my professional front is I finally feel like I have the bandwidth and the... Um, uh, inspiration and infrastructure and infrastructure yeah. in this company 
um, to have my first group coaching program. Uh, now, I have had group coaching programs for physical wellness, nutritional wellness um, in the past. I have done um, childbirth education, all sorts of things. I have taught I have taught at the college level. I still do teach at the university level. Um, I teach in all sorts of circumstances. But my favorite place to teach and to guide and to support is actually in intimate groups of grown-ups who know that they want something more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we thought, why not make one? And maybe the most surprising and most interesting thing about this program, which will be called the Year of Opening, is that you are I co-leading am with co-leading. me. Co-leading, um, and my experience with teaching is all in the the programming, computer science. Well, not all, I guess. I taught physics too. Um, but and you managed to teach all of our children. Oh, okay. I yep. don't know. Right, I was thinking about adult teaching. Right, but yeah, I have but, but in fact, they are. So we now have these well, burgeoning adults, yep. these young adults transitioning into adulthood, and you are one of the most patient and self-inspiring teachers that I know, because you you let people figure out what they need as they're going. I love solving puzzles, so I like help facilitating other people solving puzzles. There you go. Yeah. So the reason I thought we should talk about this today, for me, it was because this is an exciting adventure for us because normally we have this asynchronous communication with our community at large. Um, I mean, all of social media is asynchronous. You throw right. it out there. You put stuff out. And, and maybe and they respond, get... but it's later. Exactly. Yeah. And I love group dynamics. I really do. And this is how I trained to teach about sex and sexuality and about relationships. I trained to teach in group atmospheres um, where we have to think about the fact that, you know, groups coming together together are going to go through stages. They become, it becomes a little container of relationships. And I'm excited to see what this becomes. Mm -hmm. My goal with the year of opening is to help people transition from a monogamous paradigm to a, a non-monogamous paradigm or creatively monogamous paradigm. And I, I really mean this. It, it's about opening in the way that's right for you. It's not about everybody coming up with the same kind of um, jolly trademarked <laughs> relationship agreement. It's not no, that at right. all. It's about creating an environment where you can get to know what you want what your partner wants. This is specifically an environment where people who consider themselves coupled right now want to move forward into something more than that. Or maybe you're coupled and you have some other partners who want to participate with you um, and you're trying to figure out how to do these things together. There's no one right way to design your relationship. And lots of people, actually about 25%, according to a recent national survey, are interested in some type of open relationship. But how do you know if you are ready to open up happily? Not everyone is, and that's no problem. I've got a 60 second quiz that will give you the answer. And even better, you'll walk away with your next step, whether you're good to go or not so much when it comes to opening up. And this is no BuzzFeed nonsense. I personally designed this quiz from my years of academic research. Go to jolyquiz.com. That's J O L I Q U I Z.com and find out if you're ready to open up happily and what to do if you are or if you're not. Something I've noticed in the experience we've had of, of opening up, of becoming um, not just consensually non monogamous, but <laughs> overtly, explicitly out in the world known as non-monogamous is people make a lot of assumptions that that means one specific thing. Mm -hmm, like right. they have an imagination of what yeah. that is and they, and they like overlay that on us. I want to create a space where what we're doing is constantly peeling back assumptions and expectations and saying, yeah, well, what do you want to make now? Yeah, taking what away that overlay and letting people stretch out into whatever is right for them. And, and we both have talked, we've talked about this extensively. Mm -hmm. And this is where maybe I'm going to piss people off. Um, I've struggled to find community. 
in oh. the non-monogamous world because um, I still feel completely supportive, accepting, and actually embedded in couplehood, in coupledom, in, in dyads, in, um, in dyadic families. Now, I'm not saying this is the right way to be at all. It's just that, practically speaking, the larger culture still creates a lot of couplehood, and it perpetuates a lot of couplehood. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing. And I know that many of my um, colleagues struggle with that and really feel that it, it isn't a good thing that there is couplehood. Mononormativity, the idea that monogamy is not only better but correct and the only correct way to be, I am definitely, I'm going to rail against that. But I'm also going to stand, I'm drawing my line here. If you have a couplehood that you want to preserve in some way and you want to be open, well, you better learn how to do that well because it's going to be easy for you to hurt people. We have been in this yes. situation. This is how yep. you and I started. You yeah. had a couplehood yeah. that you wanted to preserve. You invited me in, and you didn't know how to do both nope, those things. Like unexplored... Couples um, privilege. Tr uh, yeah, couples privilege, and uh, like everything about the dynamics of the couple and you... And having a family was, and owning and a house. A family and, and all of these things. Um, yeah, just... Mm -hmm. Assumed I would figure it out along the way. And that was my problem. Oh, totally. That one of the reasons that I caused so much trouble and damage along the way was like, I'll figure this out. Right. Well, why would I do that? I had no models. I had not read anything about it. I didn't have the input to help me see what was going on and do something different. And there's there's the rub. When I started exploring and reading what I could find at the time, and it was it was tough about to find materials but you know they were they were coming out you know um more than two was coming out opening up was coming out there like we had the ethical slut we had some resources but as i read about them there was a lot of pushback against couplehood at all in many yeah. of them not all of them and that put, it seemed to put all of us at odds so we had a triad and it put us at odds because then there became not only the three individuals trying to relate to each other but this relationship yeah, that right. seemed to have what we used to describe as its own rights and privileges. Mm -hmm. Like the relationship like it itself. Its not, the, not you, not her, nope. not your us even, but like the marriage. That shit needs examining. It really does. And I think that there's room to examine it without saying that it is inherently harmful. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is where we have to be willing to have really nuanced conversations. And we have to be willing to hear where we might want something that is also causing harm. And that was a huge growth yeah. spot for me with you. Yeah. Um, there were times when you were really interested in preserving the idea that you were the, a good guy. Yep. Right. And therefore your actions must be generally good. Yeah. And, troubles in there. Yeah. But and that, it was that's helpful it when we got from. to a spot where we, we were in a supportive container. Um, with our analyst who was able to say, yeah, that's not good guy behavior. You're not being a good guy. <laughs> You're yeah. not. Yep. And we love you anyways. This is fine. Let's work on it. And opening up around the, the conversation around, oh, huh, what I'm doing? Yeah, these are the actions of somebody who I don't even respect myself. Yes. And like, and really yeah. diving mm -hmm. in then totally. to the conversations and looking at the behavior rather than scrambling around trying to make excuses or trying to cover up real cover up ugly harm. truths mm -hmm. or yeah. ugly truths. Uh, yeah. So we had a hard time a hard doing time. this. This was 13 years ago for us. That first year of opening yep. up, and I think I I was looking forward to having this conversation with you as a bit of a. A, a remembrance like right right not only was it hard and we felt alone but when we reached out for support um, it was like grabbing at the air yeah and these days 13 years later when I need support in my own non-monogamy I know how to find resources which is awesome um, but something I have found is that still, that doesn't mean that the right fit is there. You know, like it, it can take some work to find the right fit of support for you. 
And you have sometimes needed different support than me, in fact. Of course, because we're different people with different complexities and issues going on. Yeah. Yeah. And the communities that exist, they all they they can all be useful, but we wanted to create our own, our own opportunity for people to who are interested in depth, D E P T H depth. Um, for people who are interested interested in relationships as an individuation journey. As as yeah. relationships as a way to continually become more and more yourself. Um, that's my specialty. That's what I love. And because of the unique experiences that we have had, I'm excited to be able to support more people who have that, <laughs> that life that maybe looks like a prototypical soccer parents in their minivan yeah. mm-hmm. who aren't necessarily that underneath and who feel more alone, open, than they would if they were closed. Right. Because yeah. that was exactly the, mm-hmm. that was the paradox you and I found ourselves in. Yeah. We had a large community, and when we stepped into the light and said, actually, we're not monogamous. It felt, kind of felt like being ghosts, surrounded by people that we couldn't interact really with. interact with, connect with. Mm-hmm. And everybody's experience of um, coming out as yeah. non-monogamous yeah, is different. Some people find that their community, community is yeah. very embracing. Um, but the other thing, and the reason why this thing is called the year of opening, is that I've been working with individuals and couples and more sums for a while now, and everybody thinks, cool, let's get this done. Like, let me mm-hmm. sign up for, you know, I'm going to sign up for a four-week class, or I'm going to sign up and do this thing for 90 days, or or people will ask me to take my year-long flagship program um, and they'll, they'll ask me to shrink it down for a few months. And I'm like, we can do that. Sure. Um, it won't work. Not to get you the results that you actually want. We can do something else. We can achieve a different goal. But time is an ingredient. Yeah. And when it comes to your relationships, even more so. Mm-hmm. It, it, it takes time to... Um experience it like to, to internalize the experiences that you're having well, plus you and have to have to, the yeah, and you have to have the experience they can't just happen it's i for some reason i was just um i thought of weightlifting okay four <laughs> weeks to you know the strongest you could be that's not possible right. it takes time it takes repeated uh, activities doing you know say that again that's an excellent analogy with, four with weeks weightlifting. yeah four weeks you'll be as strong as you could possibly be Literally not possible. Literally not possible. Because it happens because of repeated activity. Like also because at the end of four weeks, you'll you will have increased your capacity and you will now actually have a long like this long road, this unending process yes. yep. of being the strongest you can be. Not not to mention the fact that against what metric? Against what metric? What do you mean strong? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean I when I stopped weightlifting for um, about nine months to take care of John while he was dying. I was pretty damn strong. Mm-hmm. I don't have any problems with my strength getting through my brother's death. Yep. But my the amount I was able to haul off the floor right. maybe got lower, right? Mm-hmm. So when we talk about opening up and we think, okay, yeah, you could learn, say, the rules of the road. Maybe like going to driver's ed. You literally learn the rules of the road cool but until you put it into practice and you start Mm -hmm. driving on wet roads and snowy roads and crossing a bridge and finding out that oh a bridge can be icy when the rest of the road isn't yep and you have to experience that over time and then you have to experience it at times when you're tired or you're hungry or you're in a fight or and all of these things all add together and one of the things that stands out to me is remembering um when you and i thought we'd finally figured it out (laughs) <laughs> Which is just such a stupid thing to say. Finally figured it out. Yeah. That final, as though we're done thinking and changing and growing about this. Okay. So, so that was silly. That's silly. Um, uh, one of the reasons I'm excited about a group is because we're going to be in the group. It's it's right. It's us participating too. Yes, I have I great group leadership skills, and Ken has facilitated groups for a long time. 
And we're real people who have screwed this up in our own special ways. And that's part of the process. It's yeah. sharing and talking about these things and sharing and talking about how things are, not just our, the ways we have messed up in the past, but what's going on right now. Right now, yeah, right. And, you know, I, I think when I think about a year, it, a year sounds like a long time, but wow, a year isn't really that long when you're talking about what happens in relationships. Because you can, things can be going along really, really copacetic, really solid and steady. Yep. But then all of a sudden there can be a spike of energy, positive or negative. There yep. can be huge challenges or life can come and deliver something yep. really shocking. It's, so we started this podcast talking about the holidays, talking about right. relating at the holidays. And yeah, our very first episode. Yep. And, and one year only includes one Christmas, only includes one major holiday time. And, and talk about all the things you'll have to deal with if you want to open up. Oh, Holidays is its own yeah. little special topic. And, and so year after year, there's so much to learn from that particular little crucible. Totally. Um, so the, the way this is going to work um, is that we're just going to, we're going to create a group that is designed to help you where you are now. So you might be right at the beginning of your opening up process, just considering and figuring out how this is going to look for you. Or you might be a few years in, but realizing that you've never really had any sort of structured process for working through the hard spots. And here's how this looks. I have lots of clients who get to this spot. They, they open up. They spend a lot of time talking about it and, and preparing themselves, even doing some research and whatever, and getting ready. And then they open up and they have some experiences and they go, okay, and there are, there are bumps and bruises and that, and then they get to a spot where they're like, okay, here's what we can do. And they, they kind of plateau and they hold there for a while and that's great, but it's not a growth over comfort environment. They actually start shutting back down into sort of a, a cruise control mode again. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've opened up and we've opened up to this level and let's put it on cruise control and not mess with the system like we know who we date we know how we date so they basically replicate a monogamous paradigm again but with a with some more expansiveness in it and that can be okay for taking like a nice breather maybe you want to chill for the summer and maybe just, you got something going on right that's, that's taking your there's energy. nothing wrong with that but project relationship is all about the idea of growth over comfort, over comfort. and the idea that your relationships are absolutely an invitation to be in the process of becoming yourself. So the, the image, again, coming back to my, my, my basic ground, which is depth psychology, I always go to an image. The image for the year of opening up is an outward unfurling spiral. An outward unfurling spiral. You are walking a path. That path is a spiral. As you walk that path that's yours, it's you're going to continually, if you just trace a spiral in the air, you will continually come to these same strange or sticky or challenging or happy spots. These things, these, these parts of relating that come back and you're like, oh my God, how am I here again? And it can start to feel like you're just going around a racetrack over and over yeah, again. Like you're going around a circle. Yeah, but this is not, it's not a circle. It's a spiral. You open it up a little bit and it starts to wind out. And that, and that your growth. spiral is about you growing. And it's about what Heraclitus said about you never step in the same river twice. Right, yeah. Because the river itself changes and you changed. That's the nature of it, of being alive. And so as we go through the year together, I will offer invitations to experiment, um, to, to select um, your own goals, to craft the relationship agreements that you want. Um, we're going to talk about the common tough spots, but this isn't just unstructured. It is going to be driven by what the individuals and the group as a whole need. Yeah, responsive, but, but not unstructured. Before I, before I put this into the world, I spent several months 
mapping out very clearly all of the necessary ingredients for getting through the hundreds of problems that I have seen brought over and over mm-hmm. and over again. And I've been thinking about long and hard the different ways that there are to approach those problems. Because it's not a one size fits all. This is why I did not turn it into just a, a purchasable curriculum. There may be down the road some curriculum that I create that is, that is um, you could walk through it in an asynchronous, like in a, in a just a, on your own. I want to be responsive because there are these experiments that you can do that will facilitate you learning about yourself and learning how to be open in the right way for you. There are um, rules of engagement, ways that you can adjust yourself paths you can choose to take and all of that it has to be dynamic because you're all going to have your own reasons you you specifically have your own reason for wanting to open and it's not going to be my reason and you already have a wealth of knowledge you have a rich life experience you and I came to our our current relationship with a very rich set and diverse set of life experiences that matters It matters. It means that we need different things. We're going to talk about that. We're going to, we're all going to be adults in a room together, figuring out how to do this better. I'm excited for it, uh, for, for the conversations that are going to happen, for the discoveries that are going to get made with us individually as a relationship. I just, everything, it's going to be awesome. And here's what I can promise. I can promise that Wherever you decide to keep your relationship exclusive and wherever you decide to keep it, to make it expansive, right? So whatever aspects of your relationship you decide to do exclusivity or expansiveness, that's going to be for you to decide with your partner or partners. That's going to be a conversation, a set of conversations and explorations and experiments for you to undertake. There will be zero pressure from us to achieve any particular thing because that's not what opening or individuating is about it's just not i'm excited to offer this this invitation if you're interested in joining us um, i'm offering this up in a really open-ended way the group will start um, as soon as there are three couples signed up for the first one um I've got one already. I expect it's going to be filled before we know it. When the group reaches eight couples, um, it will be capped. That's that. I'm not going to allow this to turn into an enormous thing. The point of this is for us to have an intimate community where we can get to know each other. And no matter where we are on the path of our non-monogamy journey or our expansive journey, we can be learning and having conversations that are actively going deep rather than just talking about like the surface level. Because a problem that I see come up, and I know you've seen it too, when we tried to join communities is people tend to talk in idealisms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? The perfect poly, the like how you're supposed to do this. So we, when we get together in circles, um, and we've seen this in our local group, it often just winds up being um, whoever likes to talk the most. Yeah, right. Uh, telling us how polyamory is supposed to be and how great at it they are that's we're going to be looking at other things yeah what's so if you're yeah. where you're we will celebrate we're going to celebrate the fuck oh, out of yeah. shit yeah that's a blast love we're going to celebrate i love that and we're not just going to talk about how it should be or what we think people should be doing or especially what we think our partner should be doing <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> We're going to get into the messy stuff I'm, with support. Um, I'm really good at celebrating this. I'm really good at celebrating when things aren't going the way you planned them to. I'm really good for pointing out the how the ways it's going are good, even though they weren't what you planned. And and to find the, like, the, the gold in them. I mean, we yeah. have lots of fights where... When it's done, I'm like, wow, I'm so glad we had that. So we live fight. in a tent right now. There's a lot of fights. <laughs> There's some fights. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm excited to bring that energy into this group. 
Yeah, me too. And if you're interested, you can reach directly out to us or you can um, hop on over to my website, um, joliehamilton.com. You'll see a link there where you can apply to work with me. If you want to work with me one-to-one, you can just go to talktojolie.com. And if you want to join the group, you can go to theyearofopening.com and fill out an application. And we'll, we're going to start on this journey together. Let's do it. I'm like, I, I'm Let's all, do it. I'm all a quiver. This is going to be amazing. So until next time. Keep talking to each other. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I have one more thing to share with you. If you want to pop over to listentojolie.com, that's just listen to Jolie, J-O-L-I dot com, you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Yeah, get the guides. They're easy to implement conversations that will empower you to create the love you want. It's my mission to make everything talk aboutable. Sex, love, losses and learns. Everything is talk aboutable. <laughs> She managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my lovers, my friends, my family, and you all on a podcast. Out loud. Relationship work really can change everything. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way you'd hoped, remember relationships can be messy. And that's good news.